I will see you, Northmen. I will review you, Northmen. I will upload thee. I will see you, Northmen. I will review you, Northmen. I will upload thee. I will see you, Northmen. I will review you, Northmen. I will upload thee. <sighs> what is up, everybody? Random, random man here. I hope everyone out there is continuing to stay safe and be well during this unpredictable time as I am here bringing you my review for The Northman. Quick disclaimer before I go any further, I'm gonna annoy a bunch of people with how I pronounce the main character's name as it's Amleth, not Almeth, which yeah, huh, I guess my Scandinavian needs some work with how I misremembered how to say this guy's name. Sorry about that, proceed. Now the plot of this epic historical action film basically follows a young Viking prince played by Alexander Skarsgård who is on a quest to avenge the murder of his father played by Ethan Hawke at the hands of his uncle played by Clay Spang. Going into this movie, I was highly anticipating it. This film became one of my most anticipated of 2022 for the filmmaker at the helm. This is the latest film directed by Robert Eggers, whose previous two features are movies that I usually wouldn't gravitate towards seeing given that they're horror, but I quite enjoyed. Whether it's his directorial debut, The Witch, which I thought gave a fitting spin on the topic and era it was portraying, or The Lighthouse, which while I didn't know what I was watching half the time when I first saw it in theaters, I thought backed up Eggers as a voice that is able to do something so unique with the respective time periods that he was portraying and also just getting into the sheer psychological nature of anything that he was telling. So with The Northman, not only did it look like his most ambitious film yet with the biggest budget and scale, but it also further got me hooked into seeing it for how it was yet another story based in history with a stacked cast to boot and luckily, I was able to head out and see this thing at the first public screening in theaters where it is only currently available. Starting out with the cast and their performances, we have Alexander Skarsgård as Almif, the title Viking warrior prince who is on a quest to avenge his father, save his mother, and kill his uncle. Now, in the past decade or so, I've seen Skarsgård in quite a bit of projects, and while I've always thought that he is a competent performer, I never thought he rose to become one of the greats or anything like that working right now. But having seen this film, I think that he gives his best on-screen performance to date. For sure, since his multi-award winning turn in the first season of Big Little Lies. This film has a much more emotionally and physically demanding role to have him portray. And with what he is doing, it's a revenge story that a lot of us have seen, or at least some variation of it, in different kinds of media. And with what Skarsgård has to do in fluctuating between reserved resilience and overt outwardness, almost animalistically, I think that Skarsgård is able to find a niche for himself in here to where he's able to show off how he is such a capable performer within the action front and in the dramatic front as well with how he is able to give something boisterous. The rest of the cast that support Skarsgård here are more than up to the task of doing so like Nicole Kidman playing his queen mother. Now, when I first saw this casting, I thought it was hilarious because Skarsgård and Kidman played husband and wife in the aforementioned Big Little Lies, which Kidman also got multiple award wins for. And now here playing his mom, 
I thought that it was more than believable for sure. And with her scenes, not a lot of screen time, mind you, but this one specific scene she has with Skarsgård, I think is some of the best acting she has done recently. We also have Clay Bang as Almuth's uncle who ends up murdering his father and he has this sinister edge to him. Just the overall look and poise that he has on screen gives him that appearance of a vile villain. And even if you didn't know he was going to murder Elmuth's dad in the beginning of the movie, just when he shows up on screen, he looked like someone who was up to no good. And it's Bang who's brilliant here in delivering that kind of turn. Then there's Anya Taylor-Joy as Olga, a Slavic psychic who was actually in The Witch, which was her film debut on top of it being Robert Eggers' directorial debut. So now she has returned and working with the filmmaker again, and I already loved her prior to this with all of the recent stuff that she has been in and I've quite enjoyed as well. And here, though she's basically the love interest to Skarsgård's Al Myth, she's a little more than that and makes the most of the role with what she does. Also having an alluring appearance about her, she's utterly gorgeous, and her being basically the emotional center of this movie with what little heart is shown here, I think that gives Taylor Joy something to really rave about. And then the last of the major players I want to give mentions to are Ethan Hawke as Almuth's King Father, who, while we know he's not on screen for very long, really shows off what kind of range of a performer he has. And between this and the current work he's doing on Moon Knight, yeah, he is somebody who has proven for decades that he is one of the best. There's also Willem Dafoe as Heimer the Fool, who's basically a court jester, and he has a couple moments to shine here with the scenery showing that he does. Even Bjork, yeah, that Bjork, the singer, shows up as the seeress, this prophet who helps out Elmuth on his journey in this one scene cameo and yeah she's almost unrecognizable with her appearance here and Ralph Ineson as well in this one scene cameo as well as he was also in Eggers the Witch more recently he was in last year's The Green Knight one of my favorite films of 2021 and has a lot of similarities to this film which I will mention later but no matter the role I think that everyone in in this film, especially with Skarsgård as our lead, give excellent turns here. The writing of this film, which was done by Robert Eggers and Sean, brings out a story that is super Scandinavian to say the least. And like I've mentioned with the uh, hero's journey of sorts that Almuth goes through in Seeking Revenge, makes this movie at its core as well, a revenge thriller. It's a tale as old as time. There's been a lot of revenge stories out there, whether they have been rooted in history or not. In fact, this story about Almuth was apparently the inspiration for William Shakespeare to go ahead and write Hamlet, which a bunch of us have seen or have taken in the story in some form. But connecting back to cinema specifically though, a recent example I would compare this movie to is 2015's The Revenant, which is a story based in history as well and is a revenge thriller and there's so much that is connected with these movies in particular and how they're made as well, which I'll get into. And then if you want to really go back to something like Swords and Sandals Tales, this movie is also very much connected to 1959's Ben-Hur and 1960's Spartacus, two undisputed classics. And with everything that I've said in how this movie either pays homage in some way or just feels like it is distinct on its own in being a revenge story, this movie does it with so much gravitas to the point where once it begins, you know what you're in for. The opening shot of this film is of a volcano, which becomes important narratively as the movie progresses, also thematically. And I say you know what you're getting in for once you first see this movie as it begins, because this is something that does feel like Robert Eggers in its total. And when I say Robert Eggers, I mean 
the way he has shots composed all together, the way he inserts things that are important to how the movie wants to make you feel, how it's trying to get deep into your psyche, it's there. While also being in the guise of an action thriller, part of that is done with character close-ups, which instantly brought me back to a film that I just saw for the first time a month ago, Ellen Klimov's Idi Ismontri, or Come and See, one of the best war films or anti-war films ever made to where we see the physical and mental deterioration of the main character there in the horrors of war showing throughout it. And here we see something similar with Skarsgård's Almuth in how he is looking and feeling, being so determined on the path of revenge that he will not stop at anything until his goal is done. And the lengths that he goes to once he's an adult to try and get close to his uncle and kill him, they're all shown here. And this further goes into the epic scale that this movie has. An exemplary epic scale, I should add. Earlier, I mentioned last year's The Green Knight, which has a lot of attributes that are similar to The Northman, and that's part of the reason why I loved The Green Knight in terms of how this film in being a historical piece, it made me feel like I was brought back or transported into a bygone era and also partially made me grateful I was not born or from this time because of how brutal it is and how unhygienic it is, how cold, how mean, whatever. Just how different it was in not being that far off from the Dark Ages. It is all there on screen from the costume design, the production design, and how this movie was so beautifully shot. This is one of the best looking films I have seen in recent memory. The cinematography here just so, so striking from a lot of the wide shots in characters moving in the foreground, given how nourishly Nordic it is, also having a lot of references to that mythology, of course, whether we're talking about King Odin, Valkyries, or Valhalla. Yeah, all of that is here, and taking it all in, just me having been so absorbed with the experience of watching this movie, it is so sensorily succulent. And since this movie is only currently available in theaters, not only should you see this movie in theaters if you're at all interested in it, but also see it in a premium format. I personally saw this movie at my local chain's version of a premium format. Shout out to Classic Cinemas. Their version of that is called XQ to where it is a giant, giant screen bigger than a conventional one with 4K laser projection and big sound. That had me so enveloped with what I was watching. It made the difference with how this movie really has you. And that is also in part due to the original score of this film. Wow, a lot of stringed instruments here that get into how dark this movie is visually and aesthetically. The violins, the cellos, how much they drone on and on, and even the beating drums. Those definitely pull through within the action beats here. And the first major one, has a one take or simulated one take being done when Almuth and a bunch of his allies are sieging a village and wow 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 that is one of the best things I have seen on film in the last year or so. The violence hitting does really have a potent effect and it is quite gruesome in some areas and there is an action all the time here despite this being an action drama but when it is there it does give a rush to the film on top of all of the other elements that will get to your senses and I think it is all paced out exceedingly well. This movie runs at just over uh, two hours and 15 minutes. And I gotta say, I didn't feel the running time at all. There are a lot of moments where the movie does take its time and has downtime within it in between some of the action sequences, but I think they're all purposeful and they further add into the surrealism that this movie has. Like I've said, this feels like a movie directed by Robert Eggers. So there's a lot of that imagery that one would expect 
from his previous two movies to be in here. Though this movie, I think, is his most accessible one to date. It's super artsy, one might say. Artsy-fartsy if one is being cynical about it. And <laughs> this movie is not above a fart joke that is shown early on here with a moment or two of levity being in this film, but make no mistake about it, this is a dark movie through and through. It has a grandiose tone about it that I think may be too much for some, but for me personally, I think that this film hit every beat that I expected it to hit, that I wanted it to hit, and then some. And it is all accredited to Robert Eggers, with this film cementing him as one of the best and most visionary filmmakers right now, as he has crafted an exemplarily epic, nourishly Nordic, sensorily succulent, and morose masterpiece. And I do not throw that word lightly at all whenever I describe a movie as that M word, but I truly mean it in this being a special film, a true work of art, and if you couldn't already tell, I absolutely adore it. We really do not get movies like these made anymore today, and that might be a cliche to say, but given the scale that this film has and it being given a wide release this weekend, I so hope that it finds an audience, and I implore anyone and everyone out there to go and support this film, and hopefully you'll have the same out-of-body spiritual experience I've had while watching this film, as it gave me just about everything I would want in a film like this and more. As of this moment, The Northman is now my favorite movie of 2022 thus far. I cannot recommend it more highly enough. My final verdict for The Northman is five. Added five stars. <laughs> Thank you all, as always, for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment on what you thought of The Northman, social media links, in the description, subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll catch you on the next movie review.